Hey, hey there everyone, I am uh, actually just checking out this whole YouTube mobile live thing and uh, just testing the waters, making sure I'm just getting familiar with how this thing works. So if anybody's jumping on live, be more than happy to chat with you while you're here. It's a bonus for me. But uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, and I guess I'm just going to start talking to myself here, um, is, you know, I've been getting a lot of people asking me uh, throughout my years of producing music for a living. A lot of people ask me, look, what's what's a clear cut way of discovering who you are as an artist? Or like, what, you know, how do I find my sound? How do I know um, when I found that sound? Or how do I know who I am? Um, so give me a moment before I jump into that. I want to do say hi to people who are saying what's up. Hey there. Uh, and please flood the comments uh, and chat. would love to just kind of chat with you guys, create a dialogue. Um, this is really cool. So I'm just exploring the, the YouTube live scenario, seeing how this whole thing works. So pardon me for any technical difficulties or anything like that, but excited to be on here with you guys. So um, one thing I want to just take the time while I'm testing this thing out. Euros, hi, how you doing? Is mention and talk about finding your sound, finding your unique niche. Uh, more importantly, this is something I personally call your artist DNA. It's something that allows you to be unique, but yet understand the underlining root of how you're getting to be a unique artist in a day and age and a sea filled with people who have um, access to making music a lot easier than artists did, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. So. Um, if you're just jumping onto this live broadcast, would love to chat with you. So just definitely let me know. Type in the little comment thing. Um, Nadim, sorry if I butcher your name, by the way. Nadim, hey, great videos. Is this going to be available later? Yeah, sure. I'll have this available later as well. Um, so what I'd love to do is I'm going to give my little spiel here. I'm going to talk about discovering your artist DNA, how you can actually fine tune and develop your sound. Um, with the, the current resources and the circ and, and where you're at right now in, in the spectrum of your career, where in, in your walk of life. And then what I'm gonna do is open up for a little Q&A and just and chat with you guys once I'm done with this. That way, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna constantly just say, you know, squirrel and, and just say hi to everybody who's commenting, but I do love it, so um, so here we go. So one of the, one of the things um, that, like I've said before in the beginning of this, uh, of this video is, you know, hey Ivan, You've been just doing this for a while. How do you? How did you find your sound? Uh, one of the ways I have noticed that finding a sound. Well, well, let me backtrack. Let me actually go a little bit deeper. Um, people, people often think of being an artist or a music producer or a musician. Uh, they they approach it differently. And, and pursuing a career of music is approached way differently than let's say somebody who's starting a business. See, somebody who starts a business has the idea of, well, I'm going to start a business, so therefore there's a specific target uh, audience that I'm trying to reach, there is a, a need that I'm trying to fulfill, there's a whole structured business plan. Well, those who start a business who are successful at it have that in place. So that's what's important is that when somebody who starts a business understands what they need, what things they have to get done to accomplish the the end result is having a well sustained sustainable business but the musician and the artist and the music producer um or, or dj slash producer we kind of fumble into the career of pursuing music because it starts with a passion rather than starting with a purpose and and i i'll get to that in a second if that seems a little confusing but what I mean by starting with a passion is that, you know, like myself, and, and if any of you can relate, you can definitely let me know by, by chatting and, and commenting if you, if you can resonate with me on this. But listen, I, growing up, I've always had a passion for music. I knew from a very young age that I loved music. And I was like, man, I, I, I was always moved with how music moved me. But yet in my close circle of friends, it didn't hit them the same way. And I was like, yo, man, when, when you hear that and... And so the way music moved me stirred a passion for wanting to produce my music, eventually working with others and producing music. But that was just it. I've kind of fumbled around. So that led me to, hey, let me just buy a drum machine. Uh, let me just start DJing. Let me just start dabbling into the whole process. So we've got um, SH4D. He, uh, thank you. You totally get where I'm coming from. And if you can resonate, just let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, so... 
I was on this spiel like, okay, let me just buy a drum machine, let me buy some programs. I think this was way before like when Fruity Loops was even beta, before it was even f Fruity. It was just kind of like F Loops or something like that. And I started dabbling around. What happened was that snowballed into, well, let me just, you know, I'm, I'm making some music, I'm, I'm buying some drum machines, I'm going into this. I never once started the pursuit of my passion for music with a guideline or with an understanding of where am I going with this. It was always, well, I'm passionate about it. Let me just make it as a hobby and let me see where it takes me. And that led to a lot of frustration. That led to uh, like maybe four years down the road of doing that to be like, okay, how did I get here and where am I going? And so what I want to do is bring in contrast those who initially start off with a plan and understanding where they want to strive to reach and where they actually want to go with this whole thing. And a lot of musicians and artists and producers don't take the time to just stop wherever they're at, take a moment to breathe, preferably with both nostrils. Well, one is just working right now. But, uh, you know, take a moment to breathe and say, okay, where am I? in light of my current circumstances in my music making process and where do I want to go? And so I want to encourage you to do that because that believe, that that starts to open up the doors to what I call the artist DNA, discovering your sound. And, and maybe you're already there. Maybe you're like, I kinda, I'm, I'm comfortable in my skin. I know who I am as an artist and I know where I want to go. This message then could turn into something where you're like, okay, let me just take a moment to breathe and reanalyze my goals for 2017. Where do I want to see myself with my music by December of this year? Um, so that might be a good step for you. For those who are just kind of new at this and just trying to discover who you are as an artist and re not really familiar with your sound yet because you're so easily motivated, inspired, and passionate about music that you kind of get um, so easily distracted by, wow, that was such a great progressive house track. And, and man, that future bass flume track was awesome. And oh man, I love Wu-Tang. Uh, so I want to incorporate all of that stuff into everything I'm doing. And then what you end up doing is getting frustrated because you're one day you're doing uh, future bass, the next day you're doing dubstep, and then you're trying to do deep house or hip hop. And, 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 and it's just, it's just kind of like, where am I going? So I, I want to give you just three simple ways that you can kind of fine tune how to actually navigate through that mess. And hopefully this will enlighten or maybe just encourage you to give another way of thinking about approaching finding your uh, your sound. And then after I do that, I'd love to open up uh, the, the opportunity to just chat with you guys via YouTube Live. I have no idea what's going on on the other side of this thing. I'm just trying it out for the first time and I'm excited that we've got some people on board. So uh, kudos and thank you for that. So one thing I like to talk about is this artist DNA and the way it starts off with is ask yourself, who are the three artists that have influenced you the most. Now, notice I said influence and not um, who are the three artists that that you like or, or, or currently listening to because influence and inspired by are two different things. I can go to a whole other country. I can go to Morocco and come back to Miami and be like, yo, I heard some amazing music there. I want to incorporate that into my uh, the song, I was inspired, and that's fine. Inspiration is great to have, but influence is completely different. Influence means this artist really paved the way for me to see music in a whole nother way. This artist has really paved the way for me to, I, I was infatuated. So I'll, I'll give an example. Um, for somebody who, who might be dabbling in producing hip hop, maybe your three artists could be something like, you know, most Def, uh, RZA and Jay-Z. And what you're doing there is you're, you're honing in on, on exactly who it is that are influencing you. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a very narrow lane for you to kind of stay in. Now, it's not going to say that you're going to be exactly like those artists. You know, you're, you're not going to be another most staff. You're not going to be like that. But what you're not, now starting to do is you're starting to narrow the lane a little bit more and thinking, okay, I want to, I want to, what would it be like if, uh, you know, uh, if those three just kind of converge in in my approach to music. And and now you're no longer uh, distracted or deterred to go left and right and like, well, I'm trying to do hip hop, but I want to do a future bass track or something like that. So this is going to really narrow down the lane. And this might be a hard question to answer because I know, like so many people that I've talked to, it's like, but I'm really inspired. I have so many influences. Do your best to narrow it down to five or then break it down to three. 
and have those three influences kind of carve out a little bit of that lane. And that's going to give you a more cohesive direction as to where you go with your music. And then next is your, your, your um, maybe you might have a message. Maybe there's something in your, uh, in your current circumstances, in your current life uh, lifestyle or maybe upbringing that you resonate with and that you want to have other people resonate with as well. Uh, could very well be that, you know, you were brought up in a broken home and something influenced you that way. Um, and, and music was an escape for you. Well, you'll be so, you're going to be completely surprised with how many people resonate with that same message. So, uh, knowing your message is a great way to illustrate how you want to create, um, you know, having a lane, and then being able to be in the same room where your message resonates with the people in that room. The worst thing that happens is to a lot of artists is they will have you know a message that they want to convey through their music. Uh, maybe it's one of inspiring hope. Maybe it's one of just like you know you know uh, sharing some tragedy or or maybe just some joy that you've experienced. And you're entering a room and you you're you're saying that message, and then people in that room just don't really turn around to care to listen to what you've got to say. So the goal is. Being in a, being in the right place where people can resonate with that message that you're trying to convey with your music. Now I know what you might be thinking. But what if I'm doing instrumental? What if I'm just doing house, or dubstep or something like that? How am I going to convey a message with that kind of music? Well, translate that into the next section of the artist DNA, and that's knowing who your avatar is, creating your fan avatar, and that's knowing who you want to speak to. And that's how that correlates. So we've got A, knowing who your influences are, and then the second step is knowing who your fan avatar is. That means knowing who it is that you want to speak to or want to resonate to uh, with your music. Uh, so a great example is, you know, asking questions such as, you know, where do people who like the music that I'm, I'm making uh, or planning to make, where do they hang out? Where are they mostly on? What social media platforms do they normally use? Uh, you know, what other artists? And here's the reason why knowing the three influences are so important. Because let's say if it's you know Massive Attack, The Prodigy, and John Williams. Let's say, well, um, you could easily do a search on Spotify or on Pandora and 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 create an algorithm that will fit those that lane as well. Like, what other artists are chiming in that also like these other these other artists? And so that's going to help curate a little bit more of who it is that you're trying to speak to with your music. And that's important because having your music saved on a hard drive where nobody can hear it does nobody any good. But knowing and having your music in front of the people who relate and and already can resonate with that, that type of music makes it that much easier to emotionally uh, connect with those people and those fans that will eventually... Uh, those people who eventually turn into fans and then become loyal, loyal uh, supporters of what you're doing. And then next, the last part of this artist DNA and, and discovering who you are as an artist and, and, and narrating uh, and fixating on your sound is your what I like to call your brand lifeline. Like what are the three other areas in your life that can help narrow in uh, oh, actually, what are three other areas of your life that can open up windows? that people can peer into to get a better understanding of who you are as an artist. And uh, I'm going to wrap up with this. So you are not a robot just spewing out music all the time. And I get this from a lot of artists. A lot of artists come to me and like, look, I'm promoting my music heavily on social media, but nothing. Nobody's caring about the music that I'm promoting. Nobody cares. Nobody's. I'm not getting any reaction. I mean, maybe my auntie and my neighbor's dog are the only ones who's responding, but that's about it. And I get that from a lot of people. And that can be very frustrating. Um, and if you're, in, if you're running into that, let me know just by commenting. Um, and I understand that plight. I understand where you're coming from. But here's the thing is if you continuously treat um, yourself as a music vending machine, meaning all you're spewing out and letting the world know is about, hey, check out my song, check out my music, check out my music, check out my music, then that's what you become to those people. You become a vending machine only offering music. But if you have other windows that people can peer into and discover who you are as an artist, then people are connecting to you on a more personal level, and that is huge. So what do I mean by that? Let me give an example. An artist that I was coaching not too long ago, uh, is a he's a musician, he's, a, he's an artist, and he's a painter, and then he's also a surfer, 
right? And so he would always compartmentalize those three areas. He would say, well, I surf and that's my surfing thing and I paint and that's my thing, but music, that's what I'm focused. I was like, no, dude, incorporate all of that. That's who you are as an artist. That's who you are as a person. And so, you know, uh, if you're into photography or if you got, think of two other areas besides your music that you want to connect with people on. Like what are two other areas in your life that you can combine uh, that illustrate more uh, other two dimensions about who you are as an artist. So your event essentially are going to have three dimensions to you as a person. You're going to have your music and you're going to have something uh, else that people can have another opportunity to connect to you as an artist. So if you're a big soccer fan, you'll be like, yo, I've got my music, but I'm also a big soccer fan. And so, you know, share. What I'm trying to get at is 80% of your sharing um, mindset and what you're broadcasting to the world, 80% is really going to be more about the other two areas of your life brand, uh, your life, your li brand lifeline. Sorry about that. Uh, this is live, and then 20% about your music. So let me say that again. So 80% really is homing in on who you are as an artist, other things that are influencing you. Maybe you're creating, you know, creating a type of culture or that kind of sort of thing. And that's what you're really doing. And then just 20% is really just using those as a bridge. You want to think of your music as a bridge, a bridge that people will cross over to connect with you as an artist, right? And that's how you want to perceive that. And using those, utilizing those three areas is what I like to call your artist DNA. Utilizing that will help you create your sound, will under, help you to create who you're playing that sound to, your audience. And then helps you create other rev other avenues or what I like to call windows where those people can peer into to connect with you as an artist. So um, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if any of that made sense whatsoever. Um, I've got about like 35 people on at the moment. So guys, if this made any sense to you at all or if it didn't make any sense at all, I'd be more than happy to explain um, and answer any of the questions you guys have. So, uh, like I said, not familiar with all this show live messages. Yes. Okay. So yes, let, let the messages continue. Um, I guess, and I'm trying to, oh, wow. Okay. Here we go. Uh, one second. Okay. Hold on guys. I'm trying to get this. Okay. So let me, let me start from here. Uh, I'm from Morocco, so hey, what's up? Um, so wait, what what did you say helps you find your sound? Uh, let me see. I really, I'm really in that messy moment working with different styles, but can't find this DNA yet. Um, hello from Vancouver, guys. Awesome. I'm loving all these questions. So I'm just um, and pardon me. I'm just gonna go through all the stuff, and, uh, and 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 try to answer. Uh, we've got a lot of people from from Europe. Um, so if, you know, let me know where you're from and I'm scrolling through these really quickly to answer any questions you might have on what I talked about. So someone typed in, look, they've, they've narrowed down Ed Sheeran, Eminem and Bieber. Well, that's great. And, and just even using that. So you've got the common denominator between all those three, you know, very pop centered thing. And so that's going to be a lane that you want to create for yourself to help you kind of motivate you into finding out where your sound is from. Um, all right, guys, so I've, I've got this thing working. I can see the, the comments now. So go ahead, hit me up with any questions. Uh, so uh, Cassian Alexander, Cassian Alexander is asking, have you ever read 74 Creative Strategies for EDM Producers? Any good? Have I ever read that? No, I, I can honestly say I have not read it. Uh, don't think I've even heard of it. Uh, sounds great. Uh, oh, I think, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, you're talking about the book um, from Ableton. If I'm not mistaken, yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. It was like a great book that Ableton created a, a while back. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I've actually read a couple. Uh, I've read like a couple uh, of the stuff in there. Really great book. It, it very practical things that can help spark creative ideas and help that keep uh, um, that that mindset going. Uh, I, it might be geared uh, uh, the. The, the assumption that it's only geared towards electronic dance music, um, there's a lot of helpful tips, even if you're not making EDM, that are really good that you can implement, that you can get from that book as well. So definitely check it out. Um, big up to everybody from Brazil. I'm seeing a lot of people from Brazil here. How can I make a great vocal recording at Ableton? That's a great question. I cover 
uh, um, I've got a couple videos uh, on vocal comping and vocal recording in YouTube. Uh, you could definitely check out the channel uh, for some of that. But I'm actually going to be doing a video on walking you through because I'm getting a lot of pity people hitting me up with, um, you know, how do I record vocals? How do I track vocals? How do I record vocals when working with other people or myself? So I'm actually going to create a video walking you through the ABCs of recording great vocals um, in two genres, pop and rap. I'm just going to do those two. And uh, so definitely subscribe and be on the lookout for that. I should be working on that video next week if I have time. I know my, my consistency with the videos has been crazy because I'm trying to jump from project to project and then squeeze some time to do these videos. But I'm loving this whole mobile live thing, so I might be doing a lot more of that soon. Um, oddly enough, my uh, first song got more views on YouTube than my second song, and I advertised them fairly and I uh, fairly same way, even though I believe the second song was better made and slightly better produced spending. Um, I'm not sure if that was a question or maybe just a comment. Uh, from Sweden here, what are your thoughts on experimentation for finding your sound? Um, Valsirk. I'm so sorry if I messed up your name. But what's what are your thoughts on experimentation for finding your sound? Well, listen, finding your sound is an on... I wouldn't say an ongoing... It, it, it kind of is an ongoing process. But what I mean by that is going over what I've covered before, it, the artist DNA is really helpful to lay down a good solid foundation. And once you have a good foundation on, you're going to be building upon that foundation. So I'm not saying, you know, I started off producing drum and bass and DJing drum and bass um, back in 97, 98. And then my whole story was that I was producing drum and bass at that time down here in Miami. I was very much involved in the drum and bass scene here in Miami. And I linked up with Jimmy Douglas and Timberland. And instead of trying to quickly make hip-hop beats and, and try to sell, you know, Timberland on my hip-hop beats, that's almost like selling water to a whale. I came at the approach of like, hey, if you guys need any remixing, you let me know. And I would remix. I started to remix some of their stuff um, and doing what I was good at. And so at the time, drum and bass was my sound. But as I started as I started digging deeper and asking that question, who is really influencing me in my music, I really noticed that I was very, very glued to, uh, you know, Max Martin was a big influence. And so pop and, and producing pop was a really big uh, goal that I was, I was, uh, I, I wanted at the very core of my music production. So it, you know, it also helped that I was um, working alongside of guys like Jimmy Douglas and Timberland and, and, and things like that. And um, so coming from that camp, I realized and started knowing how the pop machine worked. And I, I got addicted. I started loving that and that. But I started building upon uh, my sound. I started building and growing into where I'm at today, where I kind of am very much comfortable. So what I'm trying to say is this. At the very beginning of your career, don't get distracted with trying to do so many different genres or don't try to be the jack of all trades. Be very good at one thing. Be the best at, if you're going to be doing Deep House, focus on rocking Deep House so well that people locally and around you and your circles will be like, that's the guy to go to for some deep house. And then once you get that down, it becomes so natural that it overflows into the other areas of genres that you incorporate your style of producing deep house into the other genres. And that's how you can be better at expanding the horizons of where you're going to be going. But being distracted at the very beginning of trying to do deep house and then trying to do dubstep and trying to do this, that hinders a lot of people. And it actually leads into frustration and discontentment. So I hope that answered your question. Um, uh, so uh, let me, I'm going to answer a couple more questions. And, uh, and uh, I think it's been going live for 24 minutes. I'll answer a couple more questions and I'll, I'll wrap this up. I've been having a blast doing this. So uh, as a beginner, I guess my question is, how can one connect with the audience? SH4D2 music. How can one connect with the audience? Well, uh, the, you can't connect with someone if you're not even connecting with what you're doing yourself. And what I mean by that is if you're not completely confident in, in your expression of your passion for making music, and, and that's okay if you're not because you're just getting started at this. That's cool. That's why this is so important, realizing who's influencing you and, and, and just just get, I'll tell you what, don't get hung up on convincing somebody of approval for your music. Just have a great time in the production of it. Just have a great time in fall, fall in love with producing music first. 
fall in love with it, get to the point where you're like, man, I really am comfortable in my skin. I kind of like that. And then start focusing on where you want to direct that music to. Um, you know, that way you're not trying to juggle both things at the same time. Um, uh, that makes makes. So <clears throat> let's see what we got. I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat my question. Why should we listen to you and take your advice? Wasim uh, Why should you listen to me and take my advice? You shouldn't. Uh, you don't have to take my advice. You shouldn't listen to me. Um, I, I'm actually I'm actually privileged and honored to be sharing with you throughout my 17 years of production experience. I've been producing music for 17 years now for a living. Um, and in no way, shape, or form am I trying to twist anybody's arm or demanding you to listen to me. There are thousands of great other, there's probably thousands of people out there who are more brilliant than I am, more smarter than I am, and probably are more wise, wiser than I am in this whole thing. I'm just honored and lucky to have learned what I've learned throughout my 17 years. And I'm privileged to help other people who are hungry and who are driven to want to succeed with their music. That's who I'm looking for to talk to. So if you're hungry and you're driven and want to take that next step with your music, those are the people that I'm interested in in, in sharing the ups and downs of my experience to help you take that next step. Um, you know, that's the thing. Knowing a lot of things, knowing a lot of facts, knowing a bunch of stuff about frequencies, EQs, and compressors, that's fine, but wisdom is not the same as knowledge. You know, knowledge is knowing a bunch of facts. Wisdom is applying those facts into your current circumstances, and that's what I want to get to, and so I just want to disperse the wisdom that I've learned from other people, and I want to want to share that with you guys if you're willing to accept it, so that's my take on it. Once again, don't take my word for it. It's in a book. Hello, Germany. As a beginner, what do you say how important music theory is to develop your own sound? Um, that's that's a good question. Let me just read that. After going to my recording... Okay. Uh, let me tackle that question about theory. Um, how important is theory? Well, listen. Um, uh, I get that a lot. Like, is it important to theory? I think theory is a very great... Uh, healthy foundation and here's the thing the, the difference between somebody maybe like like an EDM or, or, or DJ producer uh, the difference between a producer knowing theory and someone just kind of fumbling their way through and just kind of putting the pieces together um, are, are exponential and what I mean by that is you have somebody who underline who knows the underlying focus of how chord progressions work of how what makes a great melody and that at the end of the day is it really going to help expedite the process. It's going to help the person who knows theory get to know. That it's it's almost like this, visiting another country that you've never been to before. Now, if you're native, uh, if, if you understand and you've been practicing the language before you've been, before you plan a trip to that country, you're going to know how to communicate to those people there much easier than somebody who's going there and maybe using Google Translate or, or using current technology that they have available for them to kind of get by. Now, I'm not saying you you will manage to get by, you will survive, but the person who understands that per, that country's language um, will just be able to communicate a lot easier. And that's the same thing with music theory. You don't need theory to be successful or to do stuff or to do music, but knowing it will allow you to communicate your ideas that much easier. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments. Um, one more. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and answer three more questions. So let's see. After how many years did you start living from music? And, uh, okay. Well, uh, <clears throat> um, after how many years did I start making, let me see, after, uh, how, after how many years did you start living from music? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I misunderstood. So about, um, I really, it was, it was a hobby at first, like I said, now I've always had a love for music, I started growing up, but uh, I, I definitely paid dues, I, it was definitely a while before, uh, I would say maybe three, four years when I actually started seeing money come in from like DJing you know, gigs and, and maybe production, I mean there was a lot of dues that I had to pay, um, so don't take it personal if you know, you've know you been doing this for like a couple of years and you're not seeing anything come in. Uh, music, music production and being successful in music is always a long-term game. It's never an overnight success. So anybody who sells you those bill of goods or anybody who's telling you that you could be a star overnight, 
they're selling you a bad bill of goods and so you want to check that uh, just know that this is a long-term game uh, there's plenty of rewards along the way in the peaks and valleys of the whole thing and there's tremendous lessons that I've learned along the way. There were so many things I wish I could go back and redo, so many contracts I wish I didn't sign, so many things I wish I would have said and done, opportunities I would have taken. And that's that's the joy of sharing those things. I, I learned more from those those valleys and those, those bad moments. Um, and I get to share that with a lot of the artists that I personally coach. Um, so... Uh, probably about like three or four years into it is, w is where I started seeing some money um, and I was able to make the transition. So, um, And I also, uh, guys, I want to give you some context too. I, it was a different landscape too. I mean, Napster wasn't around, uh, you know, streaming music, YouTube wasn't around, Spotify, no social media weren't around. So uh, it was actually a lot easier to kind of, not easier in the sense of like, what I'm saying is budgets were still available from major record labels to kind of take the chance at, well, let's send this guy with Ill Factor, this unknown producer in Miami, and we'll pay for a demo. So that kind of stuff was still happening at that time. Um, so it's a little different nowadays. Um, let's see. Do you really do you get really frustrated when you get stuck on a mix? I find it harder when somebody wants heavy auto-tune. Um, Okay, uh, that's by Robbie Page. So, Robbie, you're asking if I if I understand you correctly. This is cool, guys. I hope you're. Are you enjoying this this live thing? Let me know in the comments if this is cool. Uh, if you'd like to see me do this a little bit more often, uh, and I'm probably getting a, a couple people who've never seen my channel or, or or familiar with what I'm doing. If you want more information about who I am and what I do, uh, definitely visit my website, uh, illfactormusic.com. That's I L L F A C T O R music dot com and there's plenty of uh, resources that I have available for you there and and ways that you can contact me and, and seek me out if you're looking for um, some help with your music career do you really get frustrated when you get stuck on a mix I find it harder when somebody wants heavy auditing okay so do I get fun I think if you don't get frustrated in a mix you're not human um, everybody's gonna get frustrated in a mix that's just natural it because you um, it, you you get frustrated because you hit a wall. There's something arbitrarily just standing in your face about the mix that just doesn't seem well or seem right. So yeah, there's times where that happens. And at those times, I just want to recommend and encourage you to just take a moment, breathe, step away, maybe listen to some other type of music. Here's something that I've done that's been a really big help uh, when you're frustrated with mu with mixes is take a sheet of paper, Crayola, crayon, whatever you, get, whatever you have available. Take a sheet of paper or your phone step away, go somewhere else, and write down five, four or five things that you think would make this mix or the song, if you're producing a song, five things that you think would make this song or mix complete. If it's just, well, I think the vocals, if I could just get the vocals down, or if I can just get some lyrics or whatever, you know, narrow it down. That way you have a clear agenda when you come back, when you come back to the mix you can look at your list that you create. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm only going to be focusing on these three or four things, and that'll help kind of get the hurdle, uh, get me over the hurdle with my mixes. But yeah, you're you're going to get frustrated. And the whole thing about auto tune, uh, I, you know, yeah. What 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 can you say? I mean, sometimes we're at the will of, of the client, and you're just going to have to take it with a grain of salt. What you can do is just create a great relationship and environment with the person, where maybe. You can you can say, hey, listen, next time let me be a part of the recording process so I can get a better recording. That way I don't have to deal with uh, the crazy mix. So do that more often, yes, please, but get rid of your vertical video syndrome. Vertical video syndrome. So I guess I take it, is it better landscape? I don't I don't I don't know. Is it you guys does it need to be landscape? I don't know. This is the first time I'm doing the mobile thing. So like I said, I apologize if it's weird vertical. I'm just doing it vertical because it's easier for me to actually hold the phone there. Uh, as opposed to, and see the comments too. So um, let me know if it's coming in vertical. I apologize about that. So if there's one thing you want us to take from this, uh, what's the one thing you want us to take from this, I guess? Hey, hey, Marmac, how are you? RC Adventures, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Vertical looks fine, Austin Auto. Thank you. Okay, haha, <laughs> all right, exactly. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, so Geraldo Alexander is asking, I'm your subscriber for long, and this is nice feedback to have from you, talk to you live. Hey, it's my pleasure. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I am going to be doing a, a, a more extensive live Q&A next Thursday. Uh, I'm going to be doing a webinar. I'm going to be sharing with you some music production do's and don'ts. And, um, and I'm announcing a really cool thing that I'm going to be implementing only to my subscribers. So uh, that's next Thursday. I'm going to give you guys an email um, about that next top of next week. So if you are a subscriber of mine, thank you so much. And you'll be informed via email. So definitely check your spam and all that stuff if, if they're falling in there. But I'm going to let you know because next Thursday I'm doing a live Q&A answering your questions about producing about you know all stuff music production stuff helping you take that next step forward all right so one more question and uh really guys thank you so much for for uh for all this um loving all the comments i'm, I'm gonna probably when this is done i'll go through them and and, and describe do you mean a youtube subscriber uh oh great question so i mean a subscriber to my mailing list so if you're not a subscriber to my mailing list yet and you are subscribed to the youtube definitely head to my website illfactormusic.com um, and just either download a free ebook that I have for you, uh, kind of going more in depth about what I shared earlier in this video. Um, and there's plenty of ways that you can opt in, uh, through there. I have some resources for you available, so you can definitely check that out. Um, okay. So, uh, after going after, okay. So I'm, uh, am, 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 am I, Gahim, I'm so sorry. I, I probably chopped up your name, but I'm going to, I'll go ahead and answer you. After going my recording in Ableton. I can't choose the right effects or plugins that will give a good sound. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm trying to decode that question. Um, uh, after recording in Ableton, I can't choose the right effects or plugins that will give a good sound. So uh, if you're talking about recording vocals, sorry there. If you're talking about recording vocals, um, the, the, I did a video on this on recording vocals or getting good vocals and I, I, I've created a vocal chain and I know you guys have been hitting me up that the vocal chain doesn't work with live intro and I apologize for that. Um, it does, if you're having trouble loading the vocal chain, just update the version of Ableton that you have and it'll work. But there's a, there's a YouTube video, so check my channel on creating a great vocal chain. So if you're recording your vocals and you're having issues with getting a good vocal sound, I definitely recommend to download the, the vocal chain that I created. It's just really easy, it walks you through step by step and how to actually, you know, uh, be, uh, get the, the vocal uh, to sound. And this is all using stock plugins with Ableton. So I think that's a, that's a good place for you to start. Uh, I mean, um, okay. So last one, guys, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. Um, as songwriters, we like to do music for YouTube content providers. Any advice? Uh, okay, so as songwriters, we like to do music for YouTube content providers. Any advice? Um, Marmac, Marmac. Any advice? Let me let me see if I'm trying to rephrase the question so it makes sense. Uh, are you talking about? Are you talking about making, writing songs for YouTube content providers, or are you talking about working with YouTube content providers for songs? If you can help clarify that, that'd be great. Hey, Casey, and thank you so much for, for the vibes, man. Uh, House Vibes, thanks for joining. Uh, thank you, all of you guys. Um, I think there's some Russian name I can't even produce, uh, pronounce, sorry. I'm 20 years old, I really understand that I want to make money. Does it help to go to some music? Uh, I want to make money of music. Does it help to go to some music sound engineering course because it costs quite a lot of money and I want to spend the money wisely? <clears throat> okay, um, so I'm gonna do two things. For channel brands, okay, I'm gonna answer back to the, so you saw the video. And downloaded the plugin. Okay, so obviously if the plugin's not loading, if it doesn't work and, and, and with your version of live, I get that. Okay, so listen, the, the number one, I'm going to share with you one tip really quickly about recording vocals. And then maybe, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to do a whole video on recording because a lot of people are hitting me up with vocals and things like that. Um, especially like I did this video working with Kiara and Sia. Um, and and uh, people were like, yo... How do you how did you do vocals? So um, I'm gonna walk you through step by step in recording vocals. So definitely stay subscribed to this channel so you'll be notified when that does happen. And in that process, I'll 
be sure to mention how to get a good recording because the number one thing that you need to consider when recording vocals in Ableton Live or any DAW for that matter is not the plugins you're going to use to get good vocals, but it's the recording itself. If you're recording poorly, then you got just poor material to work with, and I'm sure that you're recording decently, but I just want to reiterate that the best best vocal the best vocals to work with in a mix start at the best recorded vocals. And I'm going to teach you how to do that with a low, low budget. I'm talking about recording vocals with, you know, for, for less than a hundred bucks. So uh, be on the lookout. I'm going to work on that video next week. Okay, guys. Well, uh, Marmac, I'm going to answer your question and I'll, I'll jump off. Uh, so for channel brands, so if you're, if you're trying to approach songwriting, well, songwriting in general, as songwriters, we like to do music for YouTube content providers. Any advice? Um, Okay, great. For openers and closers for YouTube content providers. Well, yeah, um, here, here's what I would advise that you do. First, you, you might, uh, and you've probably done this already, and you probably know more than I, I do about that, but um, is research it. You, you want to you wanna give people, people who don't know who you are and what you're doing, you want to service them by becoming familiar. You want to speak a familiar language to them. And what I mean by that is, for instance, this is relatable in the sync world. Uh, when I pitch music to my publishers and, and the sync world, maybe try to get stuff on film, you know what? I should probably do a live broadcast on that too. I'll, I'll do another live thing talking about how I go about getting my music on film and stuff like that. Although there are resources that I have on my website, so go check that out. Um, but when you're presenting your music to be synced or used by third parties, help them understand before they hear the music, how it fits in a category of their need. And what I mean by that is, if you're tuning, your, if if you've categorized the music you're doing in a way that makes sense for them, such as like, hey, here's some great openers. So, for instance, if you're targeting content providers that are doing a lot of video game stuff, and so you might go a little towards epic type stuff. Well, then do music and have it categorized and labeled in such a way where it's like sounds like a la Imagine Dragons or Skrillex or whatever, make it very easy for them to know what the music would sound like before they even hear it. Give a good, clear description, very short, precise, and to the point. That way, when you're presenting them the stuff, they kind of already know more or less what they're expecting, and that gives a better understanding of how they can fit that music that you're creating for their need. I hope that makes sense. Um, that, that, that would be a great start, and I just don't have time to expand or go in. Um, so guys, uh, yeah, Vas, Vas Kirk was saying, we are full-time RVers. Yeah, I guess just leave in the comments a little bit more detail about that or just go to my site and hit me up with, with, uh, with that so I can better understand where you're coming from. Uh, it's kind of hard to get the full context here. Well, guys, thank you so, so much. I can't believe it's like 42 minutes already. It literally flew by, which means this was a lot of fun on, on my on my behalf. And, and I'm actually really excited to be using more of the YouTube uh, live mobile. So if you guys are excited to see more of this, please let me know. Like this. Uh, just go ahead and click the little thumb up because I can see that now. So click the little thumb up. Let me know. Uh, in the comments and and be sure you know what I'll tell you what I'll do I'll do more of these rotating um, just let me know in the comments what specific categories you would like me to focus on so if you want me to talk more about how I got you know my music on Assassin's Creed and, and, and video games and things like that um, or how I work with other artists whether you know Skylar Gray or on any projects whatever whatever it is or just music production stuff I'd love to chat uh, but I am gonna do another one scheduled next Thursday uh, so definitely subscribe to my email database so that you can be in tune for that that one's gonna be really extensively detailed on music production stuff and I've got a lot of really cool announcements that I'm gonna be doing during that live Q&A so I look forward to that guys thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, it was a lot of fun. I'm having a blast reading all the comments and stuff, but I'm looking forward to doing this again and definitely subscribe to the channel so you can be in tune with that vocal video that I'm going to be doing next week and uh, looking forward to, 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 to hearing from you guys. I hope this was helpful and uh, take care and we'll see you soon.